Frank, eu acho que a gente pode começar, porque senão vai ficar muito tarde. Oi. Ok. Uh, so, it is a pleasure for me to introduce again uh, Remy, who will uh, give his second lecture. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. So, it's again a pleasure to uh, be here. So, I will, uh, so, today the goal will be to prove this second version of Axe theorem that I stated last time. So, we have an algebraic variety X. So, here it's just the tangent space of the multiplicative group to the power n. So, it's canonically isomorphic to gm to the power n times the additive group to the power n. And I denote the coordinate on gm by y and the coordinate on uh, the additive group by x. And there is a projection from uh, this group to the additive part of the group. And we consider this foliation, which is given by this n1 form. So it's a foliation of codimension uh, co n on x. And we have a closed subvariety. And we make the assumption that it has a constrained intersection with f. So we call that so constrained intersection. To recall the vocabulary means that when I look at the foliation f restricted to z, it has, um, has no rational integral. Okay, and uh, under this assumption, we get a complete description of when the intersection between z and f is typical, what we expect. It happens exactly when the projection of z is not contained in a coset of a q-linear subspace of ga to the power n. So you see, this is a positive uh, uh, statement, and this is a negative statement. So you can invert them as you wish. And uh, so typical intersection, it means that the, the codimension, so in z of the restricted foliation, is, uh, is what you expect. It's the minimum of the codimension in x of f and um, dimension of z. Okay, so just to warm up, let's see why this version of Axe theorem implies the first version. So version 2 implies version 1. Okay, so you take functions, uh, holomorphic functions in one variable, f1, fn. Okay, and we are going to assume that they are non-constant. If they are constant, then the statement is not very interesting. And we consider the curve given by these functions and their exponentials okay, as a curve living in ga to the power gm, ga to the power n times gm to the power n. Okay. And uh, the point is that set z to be the Zariski closure. Z is, a, is equal to the Zariski closure of the image. Okay. And uh, so we said that the intersection between z And f is constrained. Okay, but now if we assume that f1, fn are q-linearly independent, modulo c, and we apply the version two, it will tell us that z cannot be contained in a coset of a q-linear subspace of ga to the power n, because already the curve is not contained in such a coset. So by applying the theorem, so by applying version 2, okay, we obtain that uh, the intersection between z and and f Okay, it's typical. And so by using the de definition, this will tell me that the codimension 
in Z of the restricted foliation is exactly the same thing. It's the minimum of the co-dimension in X of F and the dimension of Z. Okay, but you can see that since uh, this uh, intersection is constrained, it cannot be the case that this foliation is a trivial foliation, in the sense it cannot be the foliation by points, and therefore this codimension is less or equal to dimension of Z minus 1. Okay, this is at least a foliation of rank 1. Okay, and so when you gather all of this, it will tell you, so this uh, dimension of z is greater than dimension of z minus 1. So this number has to be equal to the codimension of x of f. So the codimension of x of f is less or equal than the dimension of z minus 1. Okay, and the codimension of f is exactly n. So this implies that dimension of z is greater than n plus 1. Okay, which was saying that the transcendence degree of this function and their exponential is greater or equal to n plus 1. Okay, so the definition has been set up so that this proof makes sense. And now what we have to do is to prove this second version of Axe theorem. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. So the goal now is to do the proof of this second version. Okay, and uh, I guess it's a common theme in, uh, for foliations that here we have a, a, a foliation of codimension n on a space of dimension 2n, and the idea of the proof is that we are going to use, we reduce to a family of codimension 1 foliations. Okay, that I'm going to denote f lambda 1, lambda n, which are foliations on the multiplicative group to the power n, but we have collapsed the additive part inside a single additive group, and they are defined, defined by one forms, by even close one forms, that I'm going to write to explicitly, so lambda, omega lambda 1, lambda n, this is the form dx, so x is the coordinate on the additive group, and y1, yn are the coordinates on the multiplicative group. Okay, so you have the same kind of uh, uh, log derivative part, and there's on only one dx part, and the lambda i's, and lambda i's are complex numbers. Okay, so this reduction will be, so there will be two steps in the proof. The first one will be to reduce to these foliations and then to prove the statement for these foliations. So the first lemma tells you that so with the same assumption, Okay, as in the theorem, uh, as in the theorem. So what we prove is that the intersection of Z and F is not typical. So is not typical. So again, I can play by negating each side of the equivalence that I want is equivalent to say that I can find complex numbers, uh, not all zero, uh, no, just complex numbers such that the projection of Z is contained in 
une leaf of this foliation. Okay, and the projection where what I denote P lambda 1 lambda n is the projection where I collapse the additive group Okay, so you have the y's and the x's, and you don't touch to the y's, but the x's, you're going just to take lambda 1 x1 plus lambda n x1. Okay, so I've replaced my space of dimension 2n by a space of dimension n plus 1. I've replaced my foliation of codimension 1 by a foliation of codimension 1. And to be not typical, if the intersection is not typical, It means that the projection of Z has also a not typical intersection with this foliation. And since it has codimension 1, it means that it's contained in a leaf of this foliation. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. So the proof uh, looks like that. So we first, so what does that mean that the intersection is not typical? I'm going to say that this is the same thing than saying that when, so let's, the pullbacks of the one form omega i are linearly dependent in C of z. Okay, so here phi is the close embedding of x into x, on z into x. Okay, so you have these n1 forms. So uh, if uh, z has so if uh, the dimension of z is too small compared to the codimension of f, then actually this one form will always be linearly dependent because there's not enough space in the space of one form of uh, of uh, of z, uh, and because we assume that uh, z has a constrained intersection with f, every intersection is typical, so it's clear if dimension of x. If dimension of z is less or equal, is strictly less, or less or equal than the codimension of x of f, okay, every uh, constraint intersection will be not typical, and uh, uh, you have n one form and the space of one form of z over c as a c of z vector space has dimension uh, less than n, so they have to be linearly dependent, and if uh, and uh, It's also clear if the dimension of z is greater than codimension of x of f, because in that case, to say that the intersection is not typical means that the codimension is going uh, up, and therefore that you have a c of z linear relation between these one forms. Okay. So, um, so let's take a linear combination. So we think so. Think. about eta 1, eta n. So instead of thinking them as uh, global sections on a z or an open set of z, I'm just going to think about them as elements, as one forms in the space of, uh, uh, so this is a field and this is a field. Okay, so this is just the C of z vector space. of one forms on the field extension C of Z divided by C. So I'm going to write down a linear relation I'm going to write down a linear relation, a non-trivial 
linear relation. Okay, so we're going to write it F1 eta1 plus FR eta r is equal to zero. So I'm just going to assume that it has of minimal length. Okay, so you take, uh, uh, the, you know that there is at least one non-trivial linear uh, relation over C, so where the fi are functions on Z. Okay, so you know that there's at least one such non-trivial linear relation, and you take down one of minimal length, and without, so in particular, f1 is not zero, and so without loss of generality, Okay, we may assume that f1 is equal to 1. Okay, otherwise, you can, define, you can divide by f1, which you can do because you know that f1 is not 0. Okay. So now we are going to start doing a bit of differential algebra. And so we consider, consider uh, the, space, the space of derivation. So I'm going to denote like that. Okay, which are tangent, which are tangent to the foliation. Okay, so we've seen, for example, yesterday that uh, uh, a derivation, so a rational a derivation on the function field of Z is the same thing as a rational vector field on Z. And so what we want is to take a rational vector field which, so on which all the one forms defining this uh, restricted foliation, the one form eta1, eta n, are vanishing along this uh, derivation. Okay, and what we are going to do is just to apply this derivation to this, uh, to this, uh, to this uh, linear relation. So note that if I compute, so by definition, If I take delta a derivation, in this space of derivation, the, uh, if I take the interior product of this derivation with one of the one form eta i, I'm getting zero. This is the definition of this space of one forms. Okay. But now I can use, so for i is equal to 1 to n. Okay. But now I can use that this one form, so now I can use that the, so the Lie derivative associated to this derivation, which is the Lie derivative of this vector field, can be written as the exterior derivative uh, and then the, the interior product with this derivation plus the interior product and the exterior derivative. And so this will tell me that not only the interior product of this derivation applies to eta i is equal to zero, but actually the Lie derivative of this derivation applies to eta i is equal to zero. Okay, so using that okay, all these one forms are closed. Okay. So you see when I have a derivation I can apply it to the equation above, but I cannot apply the derivation uh, itself because the equation above lives in the space of one form, but I can apply the Lie derivative of the derivation, okay. which satisfies the Leibniz rule. So when I compute the Lie derivative of this linear combination, so because of the Leibniz rule, it's the same thing as applying first the derivative to this function times the eta i plus applying, keeping the f i and applying the Lie derivative to the eta i. Okay, but we just said that the Lie derivative applied to the eta i's are equal to zero. 
And so this is the same thing as the sum, so as delta of f1 eta 1 plus delta of fr eta r. Okay. But um, we know that so f1 is equal to 1, so the first term vanishes. So this is delta of f2 eta 2 plus the derivative applied to fr eta r. And because uh, everything was zero in this linear combination, this is still equal to zero. Okay, so we have found a simpler linear relation, okay, which involves less numbers of, uh, which only involve eta 2, eta r, and so it must be trivial by minimality of our choice. Okay, we see, we conclude. that the derivative of all this function must be equal to zero. Okay, and because we picked delta uh, derivation in the space of derivation, and this is for all derivation delta, which are tangent to the foliation. Okay, and now we are going to use for the first. I'm sorry, you don't restrict it to Z? Two? There, F restricted to. What you wrote, the last thing you wrote. Yes? You used to restrict. Oh, yeah, this is F restricted to Z. Thank you. The same mistake before. Yes, it's also F restricted to Z. So here. Okay. And now we are going to use for the first time that uh, the intersection is constrained. And so what does that mean that the intersection is constrained from the point of view of differential algebra? This means that there's no function, there's no function except the constants whose derivatives are all zero for all these derivations. Okay, so this means that if I look at the intersection for all the derivation tangent to the foliation of uh, the set of uh, function in C of Z such that delta of F is equal to zero. Each of them is a subfield of C of Z and the intersection is precisely equal to C. Okay. And so our conclusion, okay, because this coefficient hard to uh, have all like that, is that the one form eta 1, eta R, are even, I mean, eta n or eta r, okay, are even c linearly dependent. Okay, our assumption was that they are, we are linearly dependent over c of z, and using this argument with derivation, we have shown that actually the minimal, uh, if you take a minimal uh, linear combination between this object, it will be with coefficient, uh, with a complex coefficient, but we have used that the intersection is constrained to obtain that. Okay? So we obtain, so uh, we obtain that there is complex numbers, so not all zeros, okay, such that Okay, if I take the one form, so okay, if I consider this one form on
So I consider this one form on the multiplicative group times the additive group. Okay. It satisfies that phi star of omega is equal to zero. Okay, but now you can rewrite this uh, this uh, this uh, this uh, one form as omega. So you keep the logarithmic part. Okay, and you put all the uh, non-logarithmic part together. Okay. And so this tells you exactly what we wanted to show, that if you take the projection, so this is the pullback of the one form, so which is also, uh, which is a pullback. of the one form that I denoted omega lambda 1 lambda n by p lambda 1 lambda n, which goes from g a to the power n, g m to the power n, times g a to the power n, to g m to the power n, times j. So we have shown that uh, instead of having to work with all this one form, we can just work with the projection of x inside this uh, n, dimension, n plus 1 dimensional space and uh, to try to show uh, and, uh, that, uh, and uh, so the assumption is that the pullback of this one form will be zero and so the projection of x will be contained in the in a leaf of, this, of the foliation. Okay, and p of x. P lambda 1 lambda n of x is contained in a leaf of f lambda 1 lambda. Okay, so this is the end of the proof of claim 1. And now we have to study what are the, the sub-varieties, the algebraic sub-varieties that are contained in leaves of such foliation of codimension 1. And so this will be lemma 2. Which says that let z be a closed sub-variety of this space, which is contained in a leaf of the foliation f lambda 1 lambda n. Okay. And then the conclusion is then that p of z is contained in a coset of a proper algebraic subgroup of gm to the power n. Okay, where, uh, so this is gm to the power n. So where p, pi is the projection of this group towards the multiplicative group. So you see that we wanted to study the image in the, um, in the, the projection in the additive space. Actually, we do the opposite. We start by studying the image of x inside the uh, multiplicative group. Okay, the powers of the multiplicative group, and we show the, the analog of the conclusion that we had for the that we want for the additive group. Okay. Okay. So how are we going to prove that? Okay. 
so these foliations, they are very easy to describe because the uh, one forms are invariant. So let's say omega, which is omega lambda 1 lambda n, which is, I recall, dx plus lambda 1 dy1 divided by 1 1 plus lambda n dy1 yn divided by y, yn. And by definition, this one form, they are preserved by the action of the group G. Okay, so the observation is just that LG star of omega is equal to omega for any G in capital G. Okay, and so this gives you another way to understand why all these forms that I'm working with are closed because any invariant form on a commutative algebraic group is closed. Okay, so this gives you a, a, a theoretical reason why the forms are closed, which I already used in the, in the, in the proof of the previous statement. G is the gm to the power n times g. Okay, and so what is the consequence? Okay. Is that the leaf Li for, for uh, through the identity element through the identity element of G is a subgroup. Of course, in general, not closed. Of G. Okay, and the other leaves, and the other leaves. Are coset of this subgroup. Okay, so the leaves are particularly easy to describe. And so now let's assume, let's uh, consider Z, um, um, a close variety, close variety of some leaf L of F on the one and Okay, because the one form is invariant under translation, so uh, up to replacing Z by the, the G minus one of Z, or the inverse image of uh, the, the translation of Z by LG star LG minus one of Z, we may assume that Z contains the identity element E of my group. But now what you can do is to take, uh, let's set H to be the group generated by Z. Okay, so this is a group generated by Z. Okay? And because Z is an algebraic variety, although my leaf is not an algebraic group, the group generated by an algebraic variety, and if this algebraic variety is uh, irreducible, it is an algebraic subgroup. It's a connected, it's even connected, it's a connected algebraic subgroup of G. Okay, but because uh, Z is contained uh, in the leaf uh, through the identity element, since we assume that Z contains the identity element, then actually uh, this uh, H, so that H and H is contained in the leaf LE, which is a proper subgroup of G, so H is a proper subgroup.
the proper algebraic subgroup of D. So you see, we didn't know that the leaf Le was an algebraic subgroup, but by taking the subgroup generated by my, my, my algebraic variety contained in my leaf, okay, I get an algebraic subgroup of G which is contained in the leaf. Okay, now I have to use a little bit of knowledge about algebraic group. Okay, this is called Bursa's lemma. So it's a particular case of Bursa's lemma. Okay, it tells you that we know a lot about what the subgroup of GA times GM to the power n look like is that we can write, so H can be written as a product of two subgroups where H1 included in GA and H2 included in GM to the power n. Okay. And you see that because uh, of the shape of the one form, we see that H2, and in fact, the statement that we make that H was a proper subgroup of G can be straightened, strengthened into the statement that H2 is a proper algebraic subgroup of GM to the power n. Okay, why? Because since it's included, in the leaf of the foliation, defined by lambda 1 dy1 divided by y1, plus lambda n dy n divided by y n on gm to the power n. Okay, so I forgot to write that the lambda 1, lambda n are not all zero. Lambda 1, lambda n, not all zero. Okay, if the lambda 1, lambda n are all zero, then this one form vanishes, and you cannot say that H2 is a proper subgroup of GM to the power n, but since we have assumed it, uh, this means that this is a proper subgroup of GM to the power n. But now, uh, okay. So, wh what are the assumptions of Gosser lemma? The yes. algebraic, uh, commutative so, algebraic. So the assumption is that there's no non-trivial group morphisms between the additive group and the multiplicative group to the power n. Okay. So if you take a group G. So you take groups of the form G times H, you consider subgroups of G times H, so let me subgroup H of G1 times G2, okay, such that uh, there is no non-trivial morphisms between a section of G1 and a section of G2. Okay, and a section is a subgroup, a quotient of a subgroup. Okay, if you take a, a quotient of a subgroup of the additive group, and the quotient of a subgroup of GM to the power n, there's no non-trivial morphisms. So then it's important that H is algebraic, right? It's important that H is algebraic to get the, st the statement, yes. Yes, here we could not apply directly Gursa's lemma to the leaf Le from the beginning. Okay, we first reduced to the case that H is algebraic. I've learned this thing as a, a lemma by Rosenwich, but uh, okay. trace back to it, 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 it is possible. But on Wikipedia, it's written that Gursa, so Gursa is before Rosenlicht, and I mean, they, they, he has been using this lemma. But I mean, Rosenlicht is also using this lemma a lot. So I, I mean, the proof is not deep at all, right? It's just you have to know about algebraic groups. Okay, so in particular, you could replace GM to the power n by an abelian variety and you still have a Gursa's lemma, because there's no non-trivial morphism from an, uh, the between the additive group and uh, an, Ab uh, an Abelian variety. Okay. 
and so uh, and so we have shown so uh, so we have shown that okay we have shown so the conclusion is that z Um, is that uh, so z so is that the projection of z is included in h2 which is a proper subgroup of gm to the power n okay and you might say that why why did i want that it's contained in a in a coset of a subgroup it's because from the beginning i made the reduction that the identity element belongs to z which allows me to prove that the image of Z is contained in a subgroup, but if I go back and I retranslate back my Z to LG of Z, I will get that the image of Z is contained in a coset of the subgroup H2. Okay, so this is almost uh, done, but we still have the wrong projection somehow. So the conclusion of the, of the, of the theorem. So we have, so let's assume that E belongs to uh, my algebraic variety Z. As we said, it's not a very constraining assumption because everything is invariant by translation. And so we had the first lemma tells us that we can go from this group to this group by sending Z to P lambda 1, lambda N of Z. And that this is contained in a leaf of the foliation f lambda 1, f lambda n. So since this is an algebraic variety, the second lemma tells us that the projection on gm to the power n okay, is contained in a subgroup H2, in a proper subgroup of gm to the power n. Yeah, so, so P2, P2 is the projection from this to GA to the power N. Okay, here I'm projecting on the other direction. So if you want, the composition is P1. Okay, the, the composition is the projection on GM to the power N. Okay, so the statement is not so different, but somehow we want to go back to the additive group and also want to show you something with this statement. Is that so the conclusion? So this, uh, this implies that Z is contained in uh, H2 times GA to the power N. Okay, so we haven't said anything substantial about the projection of Z to GA to the power N. And so the observation that denote by y to be this sub-variety of gm to the power n times ga to the power n. And the observation okay, I promised you a sub-variety that is not constrained, is that the intersection is not constrained. The intersection between y and f is not constrained. Okay, and by doing this kind of construction, you can produce, uh, if you remove the assumption that the, uh, um, that this, the intersection is constrained, you can pr produce counterexample to the conclusion of, uh, of Axe theorem using this kind of sub-variety. And so what are the rational integrals? Is that you can take the, this morphism and you can, you can take, so this is an algebraic subgroup and you can mod out by the tangent space of H 
and this is a rational integral okay, indeed of the restriction of f to the sub variety y so this is y Okay, so in general, you have here, you will have rational integrals, but we know that the intersection of Z with F is constrained, and so it means that Z is contained in one of the, of the fiber of this projection. Okay, since Z itself, the, the restriction of the foliation to Z has no rational integral, it means that uh, all this rational integral must be constant on Z, so that Z, so since Z and F, so it's the second time we use this assumption, have a constrained intersection. Okay, Z uh, is contained, is contained, is... Uh, Oops. Right. Z is contained in a coset of TH and therefore P2 of Z is contained in a coset of the tangent space at identity of H. So H is H2. of uh, this and this is a Q-linear subspace. Okay. okay, so I have uh, almost no more time, so let me just uh, conclude by saying that, um, that so there are other cases where you can do such proofs you could replace the exponential function by the Weierstrass p function, for example, and exactly the same proof works to prove the, the axe theorem for the Weierstrass p function. There are also results of uh, blas Sans, Casal, Freitag, and Naglu, where they have a similar description of uh, the, the uh, sub-variety, which have a constrained intersection, and uh, so uh, and typical for... Uh, foliation defined by G principal connections. And the question that, uh, that I don't know the answer is for which foliation you can get such a good description of the, of the sub-variety that intersect, um, that have a constrained intersection, and so for such variety to describe which one intersects typically the foliation. Okay, so tomorrow we will talk about Liouville theorem, and uh, I don't have to find it, and we'll stop here. Thank you. Are there any questions? Amy, thank you very much for this very nice uh, talk. Uh, I, I so, do you hear me? Yes. Oh. Yes. So, uh, I keep the, with the questions about references. So, this, this terminology of constrained intersection, uh, typical intersection, does it appear in uh, Naglu Kazal uh, paper or it's uh, where? I, I want to make reference to this terminology. Where, where, what should I say? So, so this, this term, I, I, I haven't so, uh, seen this terminology anywhere. The goal is to have a terminology for which you can make sense of uh, the Blasquez, Casal, Freitag, and Naglu's paper together with the, uh, the papers of Rosenlich and Axe about the natural exponential function. So this is just a natural language where you can express both proofs at the same time. Okay, but there's no, it doesn't, it's, the, the, the language is, take, I mean, is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, somehow obtained from the paper of Blasquez, Casal, Freitag, and Naglu, but they don't use this terminology exactly. Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. So it's, in other words, it's your terminology, right? Yes. So I have to make reference to these videos. Yes, but I mean, uh, so we are, I will talk after about the paper that we are trying to write down, but we are finishing to write down and where this terminology will uh, appear. Oh, cool. Thank you. We have a question. Uh, maybe I didn't catch with uh, farming, but uh, when, you see, when you say there is the leaf of the foliation defined by uh, lambda 1, etc., there is only one leaf for this? No, you're right. In a leaf of the foliation defined by... So it's included in a leaf of the foliation defined by this... this uh, any this, leaf uh, is... Uh, so it, the image of the leaf, right, we, we already showed that it's uh, the, the... So that uh, H is included in the leaf of the foliation defined by this plus dx. And this leaf will project onto a given leaf of, this foliation, of the foliation defined by this one from gn to the power n. And this is precisely this leaf. Okay, okay but we, we don't need to... So this is the leaf for identity, right? Here we are assuming that everywhere that the identity is in z, so this is the leaf for the identity element. So this is a subgroup. And therefore, it shows that H2 is a proper subgroup, because it's a proper subgroup, even if it's not algebraic. Okay. Other question? If not, uh, let us thank uh, Remy again. <laughs> so, we have a good you? lunch uh, at IMPA. Thank you. Yeah, we are also going to take the picture now. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs>